Hello, I'm Erica. I'm the founder of Boulevard Market. Tonight I have two video cameras going. I'm not really great at this yet, so bear with me. Uh, I'm going to show you how to make really easy and really fantastic creme brulee. So I've got three cups of heavy cream in a saucepan and I have a uh, full vanilla bean. Um, I know on one camera you might not be able to see exactly what I'm doing, so um, I'll decide which video is best to shoot. You want a really sharp knife with a um, point on it, and you're going to score one side of the vanilla bean. So lay it flat on your board, and you'll want to cut a line in it, but you won't want it to go all the way through to the second side. If it does, it's obviously not a big deal. Don't worry about it, but that's the easiest way to clean them out. Um, you'll want to uh, then run the flat edge of your blade, sort of separate those sides and run the flat edge of your knife blade along the inside that you've exposed. And what you get is a vanilla bean paste. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and put that into our heavy cream. And I'm also gonna cut the pod in half and include that as well. That'll be something that we're going to strain out um, as we go. So let's put this on the stove top and it needs to heat up into a simmer, um, which would be lower than a boil and it should only take about five minutes. Um, in a large measuring cup with a whisk, I'm going to beat together um, one egg and four egg yolks. Um, so you can do it along with a half a cup of sugar. Um, you could do this in your mixer, but I really don't think you need to. I personally like to use um, a really large Pyrex uh, measuring cup. So this one holds eight cups, um, and I love it for a certain reason, and especially when it comes to this recipe, and that is it allows you to pour directly into your ramekins. Um, I've prepared six um, eight ounce ramekins and that's what we'll be using tonight. And you'll also need one, um, maybe nine by 13 um, metal or baking dish. And we're going to put our ramekins into that. So keep that on the handy. Um, I've preheated my oven to 350 degrees and, um, and that should be done shortly as well. Um, so separating eggs is always easy. If you've not done it before, you simply crack them. And I'm going to keep my yolks, or I'm sorry, we're using my, the yolks and I'm gonna keep my whites for an omelet for tomorrow. And that gives me one full egg and still need one more egg yolk. Um, so don't throw them out. There's plenty of things that you can do with them. Worst case, you can always whip them and use them as a, as a meringue topping for a cake or something. It always looks really pretty. Um, so there's plenty that, that can be used for. All right, so we're just going to, um, using a whisk, we're just gonna beat our sugar and egg yolks until they become pale. Um, I think that most people um, might have done this already. If you haven't, you just keep going and they eventually get sort of this emulsified feel to them and they do become pale. It's really great. So I don't think you'll be, uh, you won't have a hard time with this. We're going to be using um, Grand Marnier, which is an orange and cognac liqueur. So just a tablespoon of that as well. If you don't have it, don't despair. Uh, you could use um, another similar brand would be Cointreau, which is also French, and Cointreau Noir has the, uh, the cognac in it. Um, plain Cointreau is just orange. Um, or you don't have to put anything in it. It's really your call. Brandy, cognac, any of those things work. Um, even if you wanted an um, amaretto flavored creme brulee, you could do that as well. So don't feel like there's that you have to add it, but it certainly does add um, an extra layer of flavor. Um, if you are wanting to infuse um, for another flavor, now would be the time. Um, 
So many people make Earl Grey or some sort of flavored tea, creme brulee or mango. Um, any of those flavors then can be added to the cream itself. And you're gonna go ahead and, um, and let that cream come to a simmer and then allow your infusion to take place before you add your cream to the egg yolks. So you can see that my sugar is mostly dissolved at this point and it's a little bit tougher to see because I'm using um, local eggs which are really, really yellow yolks, um, but they have paled a bit um, as we've stirred it up. So I think that we're all set here. So we're going to wait on our cream and um, I'm gonna add my tablespoon or so of Grand Marnier to this um, right now. Um, I'm not much of a measurer. I've been a cook for a long time. Um, and so I always feel like I know what that little tablespoon looks like, but feel free to measure if you feel more comfortable with it. Um, a little bit more and a little bit less is certainly not going to affect this recipe um, within, in any detriment. So what's going to happen next is we're going to do something called tempering our egg yolks. If we were just to pour all of the heavy cream in at once, we run the risk of our eggs um, cooking, right? Since the heavy cream is hot. Um, so tempering just simply means that you're adding a little bit of hot liquid to them. You're stirring it all around and emulsifying it a bit and then you're going to add the remainder and your eggs should be all safe and good to go. Um, so we're going to wait on that. Um, and in the meantime, um, I've chosen some little pastel ramekins for spring. Um, the glass ones, any ones that you want are going to be fine. These are just a little bit smaller than a traditional six ounce or, or even an eight ounce. It's really your call. My family, um, doesn't, um, you know, doesn't eat as much, especially creme brulee is so rich that we find that the four ounce uh, ramekins are way better fit for us. So it's really kind of your call as to what you would like to use. Um, and there is no wrong answer. The only thing that you may need to do if you're using something smaller than a four ounce is to uh, reduce your cook time when it comes to that. So let me grab my baking dish and check my heavy cream, which I think is doing well. I'm gonna give it just a little stir, um, but it's starting to sizzle around the edges, so I think that we should be good here in just a moment. So, um, I like to use a measuring cup for the water. So what you're going to be doing is we're going to put our ramekins into the nine by 13 dish and I have six, which I think should be just enough. If I need a couple extra, I can always squeeze a couple extra in here. And then I'm also going to fill up an additional um, measuring cup with some hot water. Um, so what we're going to be doing is once we finish our recipe, we're going to be putting this hot water um, and creating a hot water bath in this pan. Um, so we're going to pour it so it goes around the ramekins and it basically tempers the heat and doesn't allow the custard to cook on the outside before it's finished cooking on the inside. Um, so I'm gonna set this aside and we're ready for that. And you know, a little Grand Marnier while you're cooking is always a great idea, so don't despair there. All right, and this looks like it's hot enough now. So, much like I was telling you, we're going to pour a small amount in um, and stir. Another small amount and stir. At this point, you're probably good to go, uh, but there's no reason to not go slow. Um, this helps to melt all of the sugar and create your custard without using a double boiler. Uh, just keep in mind, uh, maybe you can see this a little better, we still have our halves of our vanilla beans in there and mine have gotten just kind of stuck on the lip of the, of the pan. Um, so I'm going to pour the rest in. Um, the 
the vanilla bean carcasses are actually really nice if you've not used them before. Um, I always save mine and add them to um, baked goods, oatmeal, anything that you might find any sort of dried fruit with. They do a really fantastic job and they cook up really, really well and delicious. So this was why I use a large measuring cup. It's so much simpler to fill the ramekins than um, a mixing bowl is. But of course you can use what you have. All right, and we're just gonna quickly fill these, leaving just about, I usually leave only about a quarter of an inch around the rim. Um, but you can fill them as much as you need, depending upon how many guests that you have coming or what your family um, does best with. Oh, it looks like I'll have room for a couple more. So I'm gonna put this aside and I'll finish those up in another pan. All right, so I got them all filled and I am going to add my hot water. And I'm just gonna move this one just in case it wants to run down the lip of the measuring cup. It has happened before. Um, two cups gives me a almost halfway full. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more. This, uh, you'll often see it calling for boiling water. Um, I personally haven't found that that impacts the cooking time or anything to do with it one way or the other, so I wouldn't worry. So here we are, we're ready to go into the oven. We're looking like this, if you can't see me on the other camera. And um, I will continue this video when our creme brulee comes out. And let me grab my little um, when it comes out, and then we will finish it off with sugar and a flame to um, make that really lovely sugar crust. So we'll be right back. 